it's a hot sunny day today and I'm riding back marker for a group of riders. So perfect weather for a naked CB1100. Oh, what's that? Oh no, I've got W800 for the day. Let's see what that entails. ride out with the W800. I'm running back marker for a few fellas and alas and I'd say it's the smallest bike here well actually there's a CB500 here but this is probably the least powerful bike here but it will keep up with them all day it's just country roads Perfect bike for it. Perfect bike for it. A little vibey W800. We'll see where the day takes us, will we? Up sleeve bloom, maybe. Well, this bike urges you to cut. Well, it doesn't urge you, but if you keep it under 3,000, you get a fairly unvibey smooth engine. Once you hit 3,000, it's quite a vibey thing. Now you feel it everywhere: hands, seat, pegs. But. It's it's not a bad vibration. It's <laughs> it's an old classic bike sort of vibration. You'd ride around all day with it. You, it doesn't bother you at all. Like it doesn't get your hands in a tingle or anything like that. And and I would have fairly sensitive hands. Um, yeah, over three thousand, quite vibey. But that's the nature of the engine. It's actually following the old. Um, uh, British parallel twin kind of design where both pistons rise and fall at the same time just one's on a power stroke and one's on an exhaust stroke that's all uh, it gives the uh, engine quite a character of its own and I'd happily ride around all day on the engine like this and it's once you hit these back roads and you're kind of cruising 50 miles an hour 80 kilometers an hour on country roads you can just keep it below 3000 rpm and have a fairly non vibey ride but as I say Look, I'm in a bit of a vibey range there now. It's not, uh, it's not bad, it's just the character of the bike. It's not something you'd probably tour on for the next 10 days with your tent and your billiard and all that sort of stuff. But everybody should have a bike like this, whether it's a Royal Enfield or a W800 or... Well, this is a loner. My bike uh, for day rides is a CB1100, which uh, is great. I love it for days out like today. But this W800, although it's probably only about, I don't know, 20, 25 kilos lighter than my CB1100, feels much lighter. Um, much, much lighter. Uh, this is, um, I feel right over the handlebars on this. <laughs> so, uh, it, it, it feels like a much smaller bike than the CB1100. Uh, it's definitely a lot weightier. Uh, it's a delight, it's a delight to spend a summery days out in the thing and uh, I actually quite enjoy the vibration, the old style of this bike. Suspension, it's definitely on the plush side. Uh, it, it's either slightly low sprung or under damped. I mean you can't adjust anything apart from a bit of rear preload so I've just upped that to nearly max not max but nearly max because i'm 18 stone i'm six foot but i have short legs i have 29 inch legs so they call me mr torso what no they they do they do okay they don't uh but uh getting off my tiger 1200 this does feel fairly cramped it's <laughs> the seat to peg ratio is quite short but uh, I've kind of got used to it. Now I've got my hips locked in position. <laughs> uh, go, 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 go. Um, I'm running back marker for this group, so I always stay at the back. So we have back markers, people marking the way, and I wave them on when I get there if they don't move on. That's all it is. Right, so. 
It feels a little bit cramped getting off the Tiger, of course, but uh, 10 minutes into the ride, you kind of, your body adjusts, and because this is fairly softly damped, it's actually quite a pleasant ride. It's a pleasant ride. It's not something you'd be wringing the neck of this bike. But because it is fairly low power, no 50 horsepower or something like that, maybe not even quite that, if you do decide to wring its neck a little bit, you're not going to get too much trouble. Uh, but the suspension's not going to do you any favours if you start hoofing this thing around the corners. So, nice rides out the countryside. That's what this bike's for. And it's brilliant. I really enjoyed my day out on this bike. Well, there's no point in revving the tits off this engine. You can! And it'll pick up speed and it'll, it'll quickly get up to 6,000. I mean, I can shift on as fast as you like, really. But, uh, there's no point. There's no point. So, look, it's got to give up and go. It's got the poke if you want it to. And as you get uh, quite high up in the rev range, the kind of uh, vibrations do dampen out, actually. Uh, it's uh, just above the 3,000 RPM ton of mark, but you get the big vibrations. I keep going on about them, but they're, they're really not an issue. It's just the character of the bike. You can ride this bike and stay out the worst of the uh, vibrations, but uh, as I say, they're very pleasant vibrations. So I think that the, the spring rate is, is probably slightly undersprung on the front and maybe the spring rate's right at the back but it's just under damped and it's a little bit under damped in the front as well. N now I say that, uh, I'm not saying the Kawasaki engineers have made a mistake. They've purposely made this bike look like this. It's very plush. Um, you know, I am bouncing up and down a bit on these backcountry roads, uh, but it's not unpleasant. But if you were going to spend a good bit of time scooting around every weekend on this, I think uh, I'd, I'd invest in a pair of rear shocks. It'd possibly live with the front forks. Not from a performance or I can get around a corner any faster type of thing. Just uh, maybe some, I don't know, a pair of uh, adjustable damped rear shocks. Um, to take the, uh, just to take the bounce out of the bike. But you know, if, if you know that of the character of the bike, you, you just you just live with it. It's not desperately you have to change it. I mean, I'm I'm damn sure that most people who buy this sort of bike are going out for a 20 mile spin on a Sunday or something like that, or maybe an easy commute to work. Um, they're not going to be doing thousands of miles in the bloody thing. So even if you kept the bike bog stock, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Quite unique. It's definitely a much higher quality than something like a Royal Enfield, but then it's like, well, in this market, the price difference would have been 3,000 euros or so, or something like that. It's definitely not worth 3,000 euros more than a Royal Enfield 650, definitely. This is the bike that never got a break <laughs> uh, against uh, Bonnevilles and, yeah, you know, every time. Uh, this bike, I think, would have sold an awful lot more it's just the competition trashed it. Uh, the wrong bike at the wrong time. Um, uh, and that's why it's quite unique. Uh, I, I think it's been a bit of a flop, this bike, for Kawasaki, really. It's, it seems to dip in and out of the market, various places around the world. I don't think they've sold as many as they wanted to. But they've made it in Japan. Uh, it's probably a high, uh, you know, high cost base to start making low-ish cost bikes or bikes aimed at the lowish cost but I think they aimed this at the premium market and the premium market was dominated by Triumph um, with better engines more powerful bikes engines that moved on this kind of stayed the same and then just when you thought oh actually the Triumphs are getting a bit expensive now this is looking good well, Royal Enfield go and release the 650 and blow this out of the water. So it's a rather unfortunate bike, this uh, W800, but uh, I wouldn't hesitate to pick one up in the second-hand market as a second bike in the garage, because the maintenance is nothing on it, absolutely nothing. You'd never take it to a garage, you'd never take it to a dealer. 
it just changed the oil filter once every couple of years with just the chain that'd be it a bit like my TB1100 you do shag all to these bikes there's nothing to be done there's no super duper electronics look I'm, I'm at two and a half thousand revs now I'm top gear just purring along it's lovely yeah this thing effortlessly pulls up to 70 miles an hour and sit there all day so if you do have to do a little uh, stint of freeway or dual carriageway yeah it's dead, dead easy for it it's, I'm actually quite surprised there's a lot a lot of YouTube videos for W800s that's why I'm not going through specs and engine sizes and disc sizes and all that sort of stuff uh, it's, it's just my impressions of it uh, so it's a naked day today because the sun's out so ditch the heavy Tiger 1200 get rid of my screen it's almost like getting back to nature riding a, a classic bike like this with no fairing no nothing it's absolutely liberating. Well, have a bit of forest type. Oh, what a great bike for these sort of roads. Oh, yeah. This is my type of bike for this sort of road. Brilliant. We're up in uh, this is Sleeve Bloom. Uh, we can get some vibes going on this engine slightly lower gear for all these bends and hills and undulations great fun it's not carving the thing up obviously but uh, it's nimble enough it's a lot less work than my CB1100 to uh, hoof around the place in a fun fashion you know <laughs> you can't go too mad around these around this neck of the woods anyway because you, you don't have any visibility I'd, I'd get a much comfier ride on my Tiger 1200 on roads like this that just the suspension just eats up these sort of roads but this isn't terrible I hope there's my group up ahead bit of a traffic jam here now <laughs> still what's the hurry what's the hurry This bike probably not as frugal as a Royal Enfield 650, but uh, definitely more frugal than my CB1100, which if you kind of twist the throttle a bit, you'll get through fuel. Like for like, this would be doing a bit better. Obviously it's a small range. Road's a bit rough up here, but on bikes like this, you can put up with it in a while, can't you? Yeah. Here we are, top of sleeve bloom. It gets a bit windy up here, but it's a great view. Yeah, oh, that's lovely. There's a county border up here, and the road changes quite appreciably. Uh, we're on the nice side at the moment. Welcome to County Leash. We're not going to maintain this road. <laughs> here we go. Oh, the old road. It's bumpy as shit. Still very pleasant though. It's great up here, beautiful view, beautiful view. Oh, always windy. I've never been up here when it's not been windy. Uh, any criticisms of this bike? No, none whatsoever. None at all. Because uh, as I said, you. you to, to me, like, it's like a manufacturer makes a bike. There's the bike, that's what we produced. Yeah, it's a bit vibey. Yeah, it's, a, it's the way we've made it. Yeah, it's only got this much horsepower, whatever. You don't have to buy any bike. Nobody's making you buy anything. <laughs> uh, you just know that this Kawasaki is going to be reliable as crap. You're gonna, you could put this bike in your garage for 20 years and get it out during the summer and it will just fire up and off you go uh, given the choice between a new Royal Enfield or a second hand one of these I, I just have to take a second hand one of these I, I think it has a lot more character uh, there's probably a few less quirks uh, uh, you know look they massively overpriced it or couldn't make it cheap enough to make it uh, mass viable but it's a better bike but it, it's a flawed executioned by Kawasaki really 
so yeah picking one of these up brand new and paying full price I, yeah there wouldn't be too many people who did it I'd say the good majority of these got sold off when dealers were getting shot of them at a good discount but I, I, I'd definitely take one I'd definitely have one of these in my garage as a second bike it's something completely different from the super cruiser you know 1200 flying up the motorway somewhere it really is a, a day out sort of bike you could yeah a look a bit like my cb you can stick a tent on the bike and go away in a weekend's camping you know there's plenty enough power to sit at 70 mile an hour all day on the back roads if you wanted to or if you could i mean look here we're stuck at 35 miles an hour here and i'm i'm fine with that <laughs> i'm not in a hurry to get anywhere i'm delighted i'm riding and naked in this heat it's about 25 27 degrees or something like that which is fairly unusual for ireland we're, we're on the edge of uh, europe's uh, little heat wave but just on the edge so we just get a nice part of it without it being overly hot yeah so when i criticize it i wouldn't criticize it in any way it's just it just is what it is it's uh, like a 773 50 horsepower simple motorbike um that that's all there is, that's all there is to it uh and if you don't have any uh, bigger expectations than that you'll be perfectly satisfied as i say you could possibly change out those rear shocks for a slightly less choppy ride for a bit of extra comfort but again only if you were going to use this bike every single day sort of thing if you're just going to take it out during the summer for a few day rides I wouldn't even bother doing that I'd leave it exactly as it is there's not a huge aftermarket for this bike and I'd be perfectly happy with that I just leave it as it is I'm happy with the exhaust note going through the towns and villages it's a nice pop a nice nostalgic twin pop without being obnoxious I mean I'm in a group of about 30 or 40 bikes here whose bike do the kids wave at yes mine they're waving at the w800 amongst a sea of plastic could be any bike name very honest bike this uh it just it just is what it is bloody bloody brilliant like a few other bikes in this category uh you know kind of low-ish powered air-cooled simple bikes uh, they won't be around for much longer, you know, the Euro regs really are killing them off. I mean, they've killed off my uh, CB1100. Uh, I'm amazed BMW is still doing the, their, their uh, air-cooled version, air-cooled 1200. Uh, this is no longer for sale in Europe. They went through some funny versions of this. Uh, I like this normal W800 with the classic looks to it. And they did an SE version oh, a while back in some markets, uh, which was kind of a, like a bit of a blacked out paint job, but not the stupid current street one they do, or, or the recent street one they decided in 2019, or that Cafe Racer one. Geez, are they two odd bikes? The Cafe Racer looks like, so, oh, I don't like those Clubman bars, and the, the, the little cone, nose cone on it looks a bit odd looks like it shouldn't be there the bike didn't go well to that design i don't think and i don't think they sold an awful lot of those really and i, I would say 85 90 percent of the bikes w800s that ever sold were this classic sort of style because that's that's what it's that's what it's giving you that's it's coming from it, its own heritage the others are a bit i don't know desperation to sell some bikes or something <laughs> That's only a personal opinion. You might like them, of course. You might like that Cafe Race uh, uh, stance. Uh, my poor old back wouldn't probably take it. <laughs> but uh, what about comfort on these? No different than any regular bent seat road bike. You know, I, I can't say it's comfortable. I can't say it's uncomfortable. You know, um, I, I probably would have done three hours on this bike by the time at the end of this ride. I don't feel too bad, it's fine, you know, you can move around on a bench seat a bit. Um, 
I can't complain. But then, you know, you're probably only going to spend a few hours on this bike at a time. I don't think it uh, makes any difference. And uh, there's no point in me commenting on the brakes. They're perfectly good for the bike. That That's it. You know, I can stop sharp as nails. I know it's a drum brake at the back. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. Um, it's not trying to be, uh, you know, a Brembo shod stopping a sixpence. Um, you know, it's modest speed bike. It doesn't need anything more than modest speed bike brakes, if you know what I mean. You have to, you have to judge, you know, I hate it when people judge a bike. They go out for like a KTM 1290 and go, this W800, shit, it's slow. <laughs> of course it's slow. <laughs> uh, I, I can't fault this bike. Plane, metal switch gear. Ah, yeah, okay, if I am going to fault it, I, I, I can't see anything but my arms in these mirrors virtually. If I, if I, if I get my elbows right in, I can, I can see something. Uh, that's all. Everything else I love about the bike. Uh, what would I do to this bike if I owned it? Well, I tell you, what, it depends on how I used it. If I used it for an occasional Sunday ride out, like today, for instance, and uh, it then sat in the garage and came out on a sunny day, I wouldn't change anything. I'd do absolutely nothing to it. Uh, apart from keep it maintained, that was all. You know, keep the chain oiled. Keep an eye on the tyres, that's about it. If I was going to use it as an everyday bike, whether it be commuting or, um, you know, or, or I want to do long mileage over the weekends or pilot highway camping, I, I think the only thing I'd do is I'd, I'd check out the suspension. I think I'd, I'd get a new pair of shocks in the rear, but I'd get it made for my weight get adjustable damping so I can just take that bounce out of it as I say it's not uncomfortable but you could make it a bit more comfortable and I do the rear shocks first and see how that panned out before I touch the forks because most of the bounce you're getting out of this is out of that rear shock so I do the rear shock first but again only if I was going to use this bike on a daily or very often basis, long ride basis. If it's going to be a Sunday afternoon bike, I wouldn't touch anything. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change the exhaust. I'd do nothing. It's very easy to get to neutral. Um, that 850 is a sharp looking BMW, isn't it? Very nice. What do you think of my red vest? Because I'm the back marker, I'm the only person wearing red. So when someone's marking the road at the junctions up ahead, and they see a red vest, they know they can carry on, and I'm the very last man in the group. Here we are. I'm, uh, not that he's trying, but I am keeping up with an S1000 at the moment. <laughs> Because he can't go any faster. Well, he can go faster around these corners. I can feel this suspension around those bends if you push it. <laughs> you can, you can, you can. Ooh, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not too sure, not, not too sure about these tyres either. But uh, look, we're out for a country ride. That S1000 can't go any faster than me on these small, nudgery, twisty roads. Really, uh, not without taking risks. No. But I'm sure he has a more comfortable ride in, in terms of controlled suspension uh, and instant power, of course. But if you want to cruise at 70 miles an hour on this, no bother at all. The engine, uh, it, it accelerates quite nicely. It's not like some big heavy flywheel type of bike. Um, it's free to spin up. Yeah, doing about 70 mile an hour there in fourth, and uh, you could sit there at 70 mile an hour all day on this. Uh, those revs aren't intrusive at that uh, in that spot. 
see, look, I could have had that view on that corner. I could have had you. <laughs> that, that's, that's not the hooligan attitude we want in a W800, Terry. Oh, I'll definitely have to borrow this bike again on a Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Whoa, oh, fucking hell. That fucking tractor, that car nearly ploughed into it there. It's fucking smoke coming off his tyres around that corner. Yeah, you can change direction quickly enough on this. I mean, it's a heavy bike for its power, but it's actually not a heavy bike, if you know what I mean. Uh, so you can change direction pretty quickly on this. It's dead easy to drive. Oh, it's dead easy to drive. Oh, a nice country stretch. Get a bit of air through my vest. <laughs> oh, oh, riding bikes is intoxicating, isn't it? It's a bit like a drug. But you've got to keep concentrating. Concentrating. Right, I shall have to wait for that S1000. He was off the side having a wee wee. <laughs> I'm the back marker, so I'll have to pull over. Actually, when all the water-cooled engines have rotted away because somebody left crappy coolant in them after years and years, it's going to be all the Royal Enfields, W800s and CVs that are left. <laughs> Come the nuclear apocalypse! We'll all be riding, everyone's going to be looking for W800s. <laughs> or any air-cooled bike. Uh, I, can, I can really say I haven't had so much fun on a bike in ages. I'm really glad I'm not riding my Tiger 1200. on this hot sunny day. I'm delighted to be riding a 50 horsepower naked bike. I've had absolute joy riding this bike today. It's been brilliant. Everyone should have a simple road bike. Now whether it be something like this or you know 350 Meteor or or even a, a modern 300cc Honda you know any anything any light low power bike it's really refreshing i've had a great day out in this an absolute blast we'll see brian's chosen the scenic route then uh right oh that's that's a lovely green building <laughs> here we are <laughs> All aboard! Super! Love that quacker. Some snippets I picked up on this bike. It's got a payload of 183 kilos or 403 pounds, which is quite impressive for a little retro road bike, really. That, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. If I remember rightly, the Yamaha 900 GT, when it first came out, had a payload, a poultry payload of uh, 167 kilos. So 183 kilos for a, a, a small uh, W800, that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. Uh, we all know about the bevel gear on the side, that's quite unusual. What's great is the valve adjustment. On a Royal Enfield 650, you've got the old-fashioned uh, screw and lock nut, lock nut. On something like my CB1100 EX, or any other CB1100 as it happens, the air-cooled ones, um, it's shim under bucket. It's a complete pain in the ass to complete camshaft removal to change the shims there. The W800 has an amazing system. Uh, 
it's got a single camshaft so you've got rockers coming off that camshaft operating the valves but they do use uh, shims but what you can do then is <laughs> slide the rocker out the way and with a magnet remove the shim and change the shim so you can measure your valve clearances if you need to do a new shim no camshafts come out no nothing it's the most fantastic system I've ever seen and there's a little link in my description about uh, I think you might be an Italian gentleman uh, who shows you doing this and I've put a link in the video in the description to the exact same point where he does that it's absolutely fantastic so the um, modern shim uh, type valves uh, adjustment uh, but super easy to do well it's the Transmission is equipped, this is straight from the user manual now, the transmission is equipped with a positive neutral finder. When the motorcycle is standing still, the transmission cannot be shifted past neutral from first gear. To use the positive neutral finder, shift down to first gear, then lift up on the shift pedal or standing still. The transmission will only shift into neutral. So basically when you come to a stop, you've kind of got all the way down into first, uh, you, you've stopped and you pull up on the uh, lever, it's always going to go into neutral. And I, I didn't know I had this feature until uh, I looked up on it afterwards and I always thought it was uh, dead handy to do, so that was very good. What else? Uh, yeah, okay, To uh, one thing it does tell you in the manual, if you're going to be sitting there ticking over for more than five minutes, switch the engine off. So if a really long light change, uh, why not yeah, switch the engine off? It is air-cooled, and if you're not moving, you're not cooling it. Uh, it's nice to see, though, it's clean and uncluttered. There's no oil cooler. Most of the air-cooled bikes that are left uh, kind of um, help themselves along a bit by sticking on an oil cooler. Uh, you might notice here on the W800, it doesn't even have an oil cooler. So that's interesting. Something in the manual that I'm sure a lot of people never bother reading. <laughs> we talked about this thing having a payload of up to 183 kilos or 403 pounds. Well, they give you two uh, back tyre pressures. Up to 97.5 kilos or 215 pounds, they recommend 32 psi for the back tyre. Once you go over uh, that 97.5 kilos, up to that maximum 183 kilos, they want you to put 36 psi in the back tire. So if you're a heavy uh, chap or chap s uh, like me, uh, you'd go away uh, and stick 36 in the back tire wherever you are, uh, whatever load you have, or whether you have a pillion or not, or anything like that. So uh, that probably is something to do with it having a tube tire, I guess, because you find that there are a lot of tubeless tired bikes. Uh, they don't give you uh, alternate tyre pressures depending on load. My Africa Twin, uh, my 2016 Africa Twin used to do that. It used to give you two tyre pressures for loading uh, with pillion and all that, or solo. So, yeah, 36 PSI in the back if you're a heavy fella or heavy girl or taking lots of luggage. Uh, I've seen some YouTube videos of guys uh, complaining and dragging the pegs because they're kind of pushing on and stuff like that. Well, look... It, when you add more weight to a bike, uh, you add more preload to compensate for that weight, and, br weight and, and bring the back of the bike back up again. But in the manual, specifically Kawasaki, uh, they also want you to raise the rear preload if you're going to be riding at speed. So if one of your criteria is you're riding at speed, they want you to up the rear preload uh, either to up to position three, four or five, whatever suits you. That's going to give you a bit more ground clearance because the faster you're going, the faster the, the, any forces on that bike are going to compress that suspension and possibly drag that peg. So even though you might have a light load on the bike, you might be a you know seven stone rider and uh, you would normally have the preload in that low position, perhaps the factory stock position. If you're going to ride kind of speedily, they're suggesting you might uh, start adding more re rear preload just for the speed and that's probably going to stop the pegs so that's interesting that's in the user manual as well that's about it for quirks and little bits and bobs so and i think that's about it for this video it's gone on long enough ta-ta okay you know you're alive on this bike Ha 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 ha!